What was your I was only gone X minutes, what the heck happened story? Story 1. Someone used a fire extinguisher to put out a grease fire, and it was the carbon type, so the cook thought it was the proper fire extinguisher, and regardless of it being the right kind, it was still the wrong thing to do. The problem was, there was a huge vat of grease at the bottom of the rotisserie, and when you turn on a fire extinguisher, the spray comes out with such incredible force, it splashed all the grease out of the rotisserie. Then that grease is all over the floor, and it reignited spreading fire all over the floor. When you have a huge vat of grease burning, there's only one of two things you can do. Close the door to the rotisserie and let it burn itself out, or toss a bucket of cold grease into the fire. There was a bucket of cold grease near the fire, and I kicked it over, put the fire on the floor out. Then I closed the door to the rotisserie to let it burn itself out. Now a lot of people are thinking, why is cold grease so effective at putting out a fire? Isn't it like tossing gasoline on a fire? The answer is no. It's nothing like tossing gasoline on a fire. Cold grease just doesn't catch fire easily. It has to be heated up first, which takes time. The grease cooking in a rotisserie has been heating up for several hours. The reason why the grease in the rotisserie caught fire was that grease is extremely hot, and something pushed it over the ignition point. Grease does not mix with water, so water can't put out a grease fire. But grease will mix with other grease. If you dump a bucket of cold grease into a grease fire, what happens is the temperature of the total volume of grease became a compromise between the cold and hot, depending on both heat and volume. If you have enough cold grease, the temperature of the burning grease will be lowered below the ignition point, putting out the fire. If you have a vat of burning grease, if you spray a powerful hose of anything directly into it, it doesn't matter what kind of fire extinguisher it is, if it's powerful enough, and most of them are, will cause the grease to splash out of the vat and spray all over the kitchen, setting your kitchen on fire. So keep that in mind. If you're using a fire extinguisher, don't jam it into the grease fire. Stand back and use it from a distance. Well, hell, today I learned. That was a more educational story than I thought we were going to start off with. I'm actually curious as to how this got started. How many seconds was he away? And what happened that caused the fire to start in the first place? Story 2. I was client-side APM on a construction site. Basically there to help oversee construction and make sure its impact on the school was minimal. We're moving a laboratory sink to build a new classroom slash relocate the old one. There's an escutcheon on the sink pipe that's preventing us from removing it from the cabinetry. I tell our foreman, hey, don't worry about this right this second. Let me talk to our build maintenance engineers about it knowing they had the tool that could help. I also wanted to get them to turn the line off because it wasn't as easy as they had said it would be to remove it. The foreman turns and looks at his left-hand guy and says, Okay, we won't do nothing until you return. I step out of the classroom and go maybe 20 feet down the hall to radio engineering when I hear, Holy frick, what did I just say? The assistant started poking at something in the pipe. A ceiling ring? Something? and somehow knocked something off in such a way that the entire line opened up and literally started shooting out water at fire hydrant speeds across our very, very expensive science room. I stood for nearly 10 whole minutes in front of the stream trying to catch as much water as I could in one of those plastic waste paper baskets and then dumping it down the bathroom next door. I was basically trying to shield anything built into the room that was used by the science class from a fire hose. All I can say is curse that guy and curse engineering. The valve to shut the line off was in the classroom below, but took them 10 whole awful minutes. More damage than when they drilled straight into the vertical water main in the building. Doesn't sound like the first mistake they did on this site. I don't think it's the foreman's fault. Sounds like the foreman should have had a better lock on his crew. It definitely doesn't sound like they knew what they were doing. Was this an experienced crew or not? Story 3. My girls were like four and six years old. One summer evening, I left them at home with their dad while I ran to the store to pick up a few things. I couldn't have been gone an hour. When I pull into the driveway and get out of the car, I can hear both girls screaming and their dad roaring. I sigh and straighten my shoulders and walk into the house braced for whatever disaster is awaiting me. I go through the front door, round the corner, and see my husband lying in the hallway holding his head. His roars have subsided to a painful groaning. I hear scuffling behind the girl's closed bedroom door. 
I step over my husband's prone form and burst into the bedroom and catch the girls in the process of climbing out their bedroom window. I got everyone settled down and finally got the story out of them. It seems my husband thought it would be hilarious to scare the girls, so he got out the scream mask, put it on, and tiptoed down the hall and stuck his head through the half-open door. Before he could make any scary sound, the six-year-old glanced up and saw him and immediately leapt to her feet and slammed the door, pinning his head. When he recoiled from that impact, he staggered backward, cracking the back of his head on our bedroom doorframe and collapsed to the floor. The girls were planning to escape next door. The moral of the story is don't mess with defenseless little girls. Sometimes they'll mess you up. Your girls are awesome and did exactly what they should do if there was an intruder. Hello, Sydney. What's your favorite scary movie? I don't know about scary movie. My scariest thing is two little girls who are ready to mess me up for trying to scare them. Story 4. I wasn't technically gone. I turned my head for literally a three to five count. I was at the pool with my daughter. She's two. Doesn't know how to swim. But this is a graded pool with a depth slowly inclines up to a shore-like edge. She was jumping up and down, splashing in the puddles, and I was sitting about 10 feet away watching her while talking to a friend. I was watching her and talking when he said something funny and I turned to give him a look. I looked back and my daughter, in a matter of a few seconds, had taken a few steps to deeper water, about one and a half to two feet, and was under the water, silently rolling around. I never cleared ten feet so fast in my life. I scooped her up and set her on her feet. It was shallow enough to stand. I'm guessing she just lost her footing and couldn't right herself, and panicked. No coughing up water. Barely a sputter. She was fine. But man, when they say it can happen in seconds, they aren't kidding whoever they are. I was barely phased by it too. We continued our day like normal. My friend said, I know you're okay now, but it's gonna hit you later. If you need to talk, call me. He was right. That night, I replayed events in my head and kept thinking, I looked away for a second. What the heck happened? I just couldn't get the image of her flailing so silently in the water out of my head. No one else noticed her. What if I hadn't? I cried pretty hard at the idea of losing her to such a tragic accident and vowed to be much more vigilant at the pool or any other body of water. I also got her a life jacket that she hates wearing. The End Story 5 A little over a year ago, my now husband and I were prepping for a move and needed to take a handful of garbage bags to the dumpster in our apartment community. We patted each of our dogs, a 7-year-old mini schnauzer and a 16-year-old rat terrier, two small dogs, this is very important later on, on the head and headed out. Less than five minutes later, we come back, both of the dogs meeting us at the door with wagging tails and big smiles. All seems perfect until we round the corner into the dining room. One of the dogs pooped clear up two walls, about four and a half feet up across about six feet wide worth of wall. I was laughing too hard to clean it up, the husband saved the day and cleaned it up. But with such force and distance, we can only imagine the absolutely gut-wrenching noise that dog, still not sure which one, had to have made when it did its big business. We were seriously only gone five minutes. We now refer to it as the pooping of 2015. The best part of this is the inclusion of the year, as if you need to distinguish it from previous poopings. Story 6 so, my wife is pregnant right now. First trimester is pretty exciting. We were at our friend's house, and I was helping my bro cook some burgers. Wife was hanging out in the kitchen with my buddy's wife and was holding their baby. I'm walking back and forth between the grill and the kitchen. Get a fork, get a plate. Oh, get that seasoning, etc., etc. Anyway, I'm in and out of the kitchen for less than a minute and see my wife puking into their kitchen sink with the entire front of her clothes covered in baby poop. I guess their baby decided to drop the mother of all poop bombs right in my wife's lap. First trimester, so she's totally sensitive to smells and whatever. But she totally lost all of her cookies right in front of everyone at our friend's house. Don't worry, 
That memory won't even register on the big list of embarrassing stuff. I promise. Oh, wow. I bet this woman was just thinking to herself, I'm about to give birth to something that can do this. I wonder if the husband teases her about this. If he knows what's good for him? Probably not. Story 7. Years back, I had a little thing celebrating my new apartment. Just a few close friends and a couple of not-so-close friends. We were having a good time. Drinks were being had, and eventually, the need for greasy takeout food was too strong to ignore. Everyone was pretty marinated, some more than others, but driving was out of the question. Me and my bro take everyone's orders, and we stroll to the taco place around the corner. When we return, most everyone is on the porch having smokes. Everything seemed normal. When I walk into the apartment, there he is. We'll call him Waldo, passed out on my couch, vomit running down the side of his face, vomit dripping down my new couch, vomit on my brand new rug. Apparently, when we left, they started chugging whiskey, which obviously didn't agree with old Waldo. I only went for tacos. Next time, Waldo goes for the tacos. Story 8. One night in college, I left my apartment to go to a party at my girlfriend's place. I headed over early, maybe eight-ish, just to hang out and drink beer because college girl parties are weird and dumb and start at 11 for no Godzilla reason. But I digress. About an hour later, I realize I'd forgot my weed, so I walked back to my place. I hear music thumping and figure there's no way it's my apartment. My roommates weren't big party people. Get outside the door and it's death my place. I open the door. The lights are off. A strobe light is going. Weird techno-ish music is blasting. Most of the dudes present are shirtless, seemingly tripping spheres, and totally covered in red paint for some reason. Unintelligible yelling in my direction as I walk in. Just need my pot, you guys. Have fun. I have to go now. Bye-bye. Story 9. I actually have that moment to my friends. I was outside at a house party and needed to pee. There was someone in the bathroom, so I told my friends I was going to go around to the side of the house to pee where no one could see. A few minutes later, I came back all bloody and dirty, and they freaked out. What I didn't know was there was a steep ditch right next to the house. Being a female, if I pee outside, I try to support myself by doing a sort of wall sit so I don't wind up peeing on my legs or clothes. So I pull my pants down and tried to do the wall sit on the side of the house. I was crazy drunk, so I lost my balance due to the incline of the ditch. Scraped myself up on the brick wall trying to catch myself and tumbled pants down in the ditch. I pulled myself up went back to my friends and said, I think it's time for me to go home. Poor girl. Just another thing guys don't have to worry about. We can aim. We don't have to squat to do it. At least she didn't get really severely injured. Story 10. I wanted to try tattooing. Oh, God. Bought a gun, practiced on some oranges and stuff, had some friends come over, and one of them volunteered to get a simple little bomb done on him. Did it. Turned out good. Went for a smoke break for five minutes, and then came back in to the rest of the guys tattooing themselves with the same dang needle. One of them tattooed a circle on their arm by literally holding it like a child holds a crayon and just did overlapping circles. Imagine you do a light sketch with a pencil to make a circle. And the other tattooed his ex-wife's name across his forearm in a similar fashion. Started okay, but slowly got bigger and worse near the end of the name. Serious what-the-hell moment. You got some dumb friends, dude. Story 11. I wanted my wife to have a good morning, so I made breakfast for her. It was pancakes with her favorite syrup and a glass of orange juice. I thought it would be nice for her to be able to eat in bed, so I woke her up and brought her the tray. I realized I forgot a napkin, so turn around to go get one, and as soon as I make it out of the room, I hear silverware hitting together and a really sad voice say, Oh, come back. I turn around and there's orange juice everywhere, pancakes on the bed, and she's looking at me like I did something wrong. Evidently, she reached over for a Kleenex and her juice started tipping on the tray and she panicked and overcompensated, trying to make her day nice. Made it awful. Story of my wife's life. Story 12. Several years ago, I was in the process of making dinner and had left a plate of flour tortillas on the kitchen bar. 
went out to the garage with my husband for about 90 seconds to look at something. Hear a very loud thud from the kitchen. That thud was our dog jumping down off the bar and now standing in the middle of the kitchen wolfing down flour tortillas like they were going out of style. What makes it funny is that our bar is about 42 inches high and the dog was a basset hound. A total fat stubby leg basset hound. To this day, we still can't figure out how he got up there or how he got down without breaking a leg. There's no power in the universe quite like a hungry dog in search of food. This is just one of those moments where you wish you had a security camera somewhere in the house pointing at this. I find it true. If a dog is hungry, just about nothing in the verse can stop him. I'm happy he didn't break his leg or anything. This sounds like the kind of story that conspiracy theorists will drool over for years. Story 13 just last night. After putting the kids to bed and having a bit of a workout, my wife told me to shower off and get to the bedroom. I jumped in the shower, scrubbed up, rinsed, and was out in a matter of minutes. She was already asleep. There's nothing more fun than trying to go to sleep once the launch sequence has been initiated. This has happened several times with me and my partner. I go off to the bathroom to initiate liftoff, only for her to ask why I was in the bathroom for so long. You were fast asleep, honey, and now there's no more fuel left in the tank. Story 14. The Super Bowl where Janet Jackson was topless. Well, lucky me, I had to pee right before the halftime show fiasco because it was getting really boring. I whipped my dinghy out and everybody started screaming and hooting and I had a mini heart attack and peed on the back of the toilet. Now, anytime I feel myself getting bored, I think about that day and it forces me to stick through the boredom in case there's suddenly boobies. I hate that incident. First time we're, Carolina, in the Super Bowl with an exciting fourth quarter scorethon, and all everybody remembers about that game was Janet's boob. Story 15. I was cooking dinner one night. I let the dog off his lead in the backyard and went back to cooking. I was only gone for two minutes. When I went back outside... The neighbor's bull mastiff my dog and was making his escape. I was too stunned, too hurt to do anything. I reported the neighbor to animal control and the offending dog was taken away. Ever since, it's been a daily contest of wills. Me wanting to throw bricks at the guy's house. I have an internal conflict every day, months later, and still do. He was the best dog I ever owned. Life moves at us pretty fast. Apparently, so does perishing. There must not have been any fencing on either side of the yard. Either that or low enough for a bull mastiff to leap over. Were these dogs at each other's throats before? If there was a history between these two dogs, maybe the guy just didn't know the bull mastiff was home. Story 16. If you have or had small kids, this question has come to your mind more than once. The one that stuck to my mind is when I was cooking dinner for my visiting sister and his boyfriend, they were on their way, to visit my four-year-old and my pregnant ex-wife. I left the pan for 45 seconds to do something else and came back to my four-year-old vomiting over his own poop strategically positioned in front of the entrance door and my pregnant ex-wife vomiting over the pan because she couldn't deal with the smell or sight. Oh, and my sister was ringing the door's bell. I had to call for a pizza. Story 17. Not gone, per se, but asleep. I was flying LAX to SFO. My flight was delayed about five hours, so I did what any sensible frequent flyer does. I went to the club lounge and drank as much free bourbon as they would allow. We finally boarded the plane. I was in one of the first groups because, again, I fly a lot. So, by the time we take off, I'm fast asleep. The captain comes on the intercom and says, Don't panic. Seatbelts on, etc. Drunkenly, I look out the window to see some smoke, and holy hell, there's smoke in the cabin? The lady next to me explains we have only been in the air 10 minutes and are about to make an emergency landing in Santa Barbara. Story 18. My wife had to be induced for our first child. We had been sitting in the hospital for about nine hours when I asked her if it would be okay with her if I went and got a drink. She said, fine. So I went to the lounge that was about 20 feet from our hospital room, put in the money, grabbed the can that dropped, and walked back to my room to see a nurse stationed at my wife's feet telling her to push while mom-to-be had started Lamaze breathing. I'd been gone less than 30 seconds. I swear those maternity nurses were just lying in wait. Story 19. 
had a hotel room on Bourbon Street, went back to the room at bar closing time, waiting for the bartender we'd met to get off work to take us to an after-hours party. Since the hotel locks the outer doors, I go down to the street to check if he's made it. When I went into the hotel, Bourbon Street was full of fun and merriment. When I went out a few minutes later, it looked like a freaking post-apocalyptic video game. Screaming, men fighting, small fires. Story 20. Was at work. Went out to grab a smoke. Come back in, and one of the receptionists that I had a crush on is blushing, and everybody else is laughing. I ask what happened, and they let me know that she got her belly button pierced the night before and wanted to show everyone, but was wearing a dress. She decided to flip up her dress to show everyone anyway, and forgot she wasn't wearing any underwear. Still can't believe I missed that one. Susan, do it again. I wasn't watching. Story 21. Here's a depressing one. My mom picked me up from middle school at 11 a.m. for an orthodontist appointment. She dropped me back at school at 12.30 p.m. I walked back into my classroom to see that the entire room was silent and most had red eyes from crying. The teacher quietly took me aside and told me that one of my best friends had been horribly injured in an accident in the gym and likely wasn't going to make it. He perished while being airlifted to the hospital. Story 22. Fell asleep on the couch for like 10 minutes. I swear. Woke up to mayhem. Two toddlers had scribbled all over the walls. The younger one had been scribbling with crayon, and the older one, three, became upset he was breaking the rules. So she grabbed a pencil and began marking gigantic X's as large as she could make. You cannot draw here or here or here. I woke up to the entire first floor covered in pencil X's, and crayon scribbles everywhere. Fall asleep? Two toddlers. Choose one. Story 23. It was a highly tense family gathering of my wife's family, and I was congratulating myself on having, during the three hours we were there, kept everyone from yelling at each other as we prepared to say goodbye, and I popped outside to see if I needed to ask someone to move their car so we could leave. In 20 seconds, I hear very loud shouting involving my wife, her sister, brother, and mother. She still isn't talking to her sister or mother. This was four years ago. Story 24. A regular day in the gym was working out my back. A couple guys were doing flat bench and shooting the breeze. I had to go take a leak. Was gone for two minutes, tops. Come back to see one of the guys sporting a pec tear with a spectacular purple bruise blossoming on it. He was crying, practically bawling while a doc tended to him. Turns out, while ego benching, he tried to do 405 and paid the price. Story 25. My dog followed me to the door and then I shut it. Was in there for about 45 seconds, then opened the door to find puddles of dog diarrhea all over the living room. Same with me. My Great Dane was house trained and never messed up at all. Walked out to the garage to get a screwdriver, came into huge puddles of dog poop. He was trying to hide under the bed. Story 26. Left the mail room to go get my wipes to clean off the scanner glass. Was gone three minutes. Came back to find the entire mail room coated in toner and a toner-covered co-worker just standing there looking confused and alarmed. Never even asked. Just went to get our boss to go deal with it. This visual is amazing. The co-worker standing there in shock. Story 27. I have a two-year-old. The other day, I ran to the bathroom and he was sitting down, pacified with Daniel Tiger and homemade trail mix. I came back probably two minutes later to find a mushroom cloud of flour and him standing on top of a bookshelf with a closed jar of peanut butter and covered in flour. The thought processes of a toddler's mind are still an enigma. Story 28. I had a baby pet turtle. I left Sherman Myrtle in a Tupperware dish on my nightstand. I come back, maybe five minutes later, Turtle is on top of a separate dresser out of his container. One of your siblings or your folks was messing with you. Or it was the hobo that lives in your attic. Either way, story 29. Baby powder everywhere. I'm talking in the silverware drawer, under the couch, inside the couch, on top of the picture frames. It clogged and broke down the vacuum. I slipped on a thin layer of it trying to get the vacuum out of the closet. Baby powder on tile is very dangerous. I hate baby powder. Story 30. I got up to get salsa 
and when I returned, my plate was upside down on the floor and both of my microwave burritos were burning and my cat was nowhere to be found. I went upstairs to pee and my cat ripped through a McDonald's bag and ate my entire cheeseburger the three minutes that I was up there. Story 31. Back in grade 11, I had a friend and his girlfriend come over to hang out on the night that my parents went home. The worst part was that we weren't drinking. We were all playing Mario Party. I got up and went to the bathroom for literally 30 seconds. I come back and they're completely naked and smashing on my bed. Story 32. I left a patient who was not confused alone for like five minutes. Come back to all three IVs ripped out, blood and pizza sauce everywhere, while the incredibly obese patient hiked his legs over the bed rails, firing stuff all over the floor and screaming, Bombs away! Cheese and total crackers. Story 33. I was at a wedding helping my cousin set up chairs. My uncle left us alone for about five minutes. He came back to find my cousins and I being escorted out for trying to catch the goldfish in the fountain. We're all in our 20s. I successfully caught the most, by the way. Story 34. I was watching TV and went to my room to get my phone charger. I was gone max two minutes when I got back a goat that was on the coffee table. It scared the hell out of me. Where do you live where goats just appear on coffee tables? Story 35. Just today, a friend of mine went to the toilet, and when she came back, her boyfriend had dislocated his elbow and been sent to the hospital. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.